Are you looking for an idea for a new glue book or maybe some creative ways to make a new art journal? That's what I'm talking about in today's video. Before we head over to my desk, I wanted to go over really quickly these terms that I'm using. Glue book, for example. What is a glue book? A glue book is a book where you glue things into. That is the simplest definition that I have for you. Usually I use something like a glue book as a place where I put in collage art. A glue book is an art journal. Um, so in an art journal, you can do other things besides put in papers. You can draw, you can write, you can do anything creative. So that is what I am talking about when I say glue book and when I say art journal. I've got all these examples of glue books slash art journals on my desk and I'm going to go through them so that you can see and get ideas of what you can use to create your own art journals. So first up, I have this composition book. Composition books are great because we've all used them more or less going through school, right? And you maybe held on to some, or maybe your kids have some lying around from last year's school or grandkids or whatever. So they're not that difficult to come across. And what I like to do is to take used composition books from classes or whatever that I've already been through and to reuse those books. So if they have notes in them, that's fine. What I have done with this old composition book is found ways to clear off rubber stamps. Um, it's a place where I use up old paint or use as the base as a drop, drop sheet for if I'm going to be doing some stenciling, right? So I could take notes in it. I can use it as a journal if I want to, but then I can stamp over it or do whatever I want to it. With these ones, this I've left all the pages in here, but you can definitely take pages out if you know that you're gonna be adding uh, layers of things and it's gonna make your book quite thick. If you like that, great. Um, it's, it's just something that you can do, okay? So I've just added layers, as I said, with different kinds of inks and paints and a little bit of writing, okay? So this is one example of a glue book slash art journal. Another thing I like to use are old, uh, old calendars. Uh, this calendar was not mine actually. I just found it at a um, secondhand store. And again, I started using it as a place where I clear off my rubber stamps. You know, if I finish rubber stamping something and I still have ink on them, I like to, to, to clean them off here so that if I put the rubber stamp down, it doesn't leave a mess on my desk like I did here. <laughs> so I started to use it as a place to clear off my rubber stamps, but this would be also a really cool place that you could do a bunch of things, including journaling. You've got lines that you can use for writing and just, you know, a place to add all kinds of things. In this case, I would probably tear out pages because it will get thick again. But if you have this, this band on it, you know, this is pretty good about, you know, holding stuff together. So it doesn't matter if it gets big or not. Okay. So there's this kind. And then there's also this kind of planner calendars. What's nice about these is that they have tabs. So if you have old ones of these that you no longer want, you can just collage right over the pages, right? You can just add layers of things on, paint, glue, whatever, right? Now, as again, with these tabs, I mentioned that you can do stuff with them. Let's see. You can take small bits of papers, interesting papers, and you can, you know, put them over the top like this. Um, it doesn't need to be exactly the same shape as the tab, though, of course, you can fussy cut with your scissors, but you can use any kinds of interesting papers 
or cloth and you know make those tabs and just it would just add a layer of interest to whatever you are using as your journal here is that example in the extreme this is a kind of a notebook made with all kinds of various papers layers of papers well actually not layers just single sheets of papers but these tabs are made from cloth and they're just literally stapled onto the page I did not make this one um, and I, I don't remember the person who I bought this from on Etsy it was so long ago it was at least five years ago so I don't I don't know who it was and she did not put her name inside the front um, or back of the covers so I don't know who it was but it's just a really cool collection of different kinds of papers and you definitely could journal or use it as a glue book you know by by collaging or adding adding your own layers of interest into something like this another one similar to this these are the with the ring binding I have done with these are readers digest covers so I took off the spine, just used a very sharp X-Acto knife and uh, removed, the, removed the covers of the Reader's Digest and then used them with ring binding to make this journal. This is a glue book journal and the cool thing about this is that you can add as many pages as you want and you can change the order around. So if you're not happy with the order, you can you know move things around. These Reader's Digest journals are some of my favorite kinds of glue books to make. I even use them as sometimes when people send me gifts, they wrap them up in really pretty, you know, pretty wrapping. And so I will literally wrap the page with the materials that somebody sent me as a, as a wrapped gift. Um, I will wrap it and kind of reproduce how uh, the package was sent to me. So that's, that's kind of fun. With these, I like to use, so these are these are dividers. These are also, again, tab dividers. They're, it's kind of a thick, very thick material. Um, you can also use things like postcard material, just kind of heavier cardstock. And it doesn't matter what's on them. You can even use junk mail, you know, stuff that you receive in your mailbox. Just look through and see if it's the right texture, something kind of heavy that's gonna take possibly wear and tear if you're adding layers to it or glue whatever um, and then just you know play with papers so more ideas with with journals would be things like these guys so these are this is just a blank little notebook that I got from Daiso which is a um, I don't know it's like a 99 cent store um, here in the San Francisco Bay Area but these little blank notebooks are great for journaling they're great for adding layers of collage but again, I would tear out some of these pages, tear out some of the pages because they will get really thick with layers. Once you tear out pages, it's a good idea to add something like washi tape right down the middle. So what I would typically do is tear out, say, two pages, keep one, turn it, tear out another two pages and go through the whole whole thing and do this. And you might think, oh my gosh, you're tearing out so, so much. But it's not because these little books get really fat with layers if, if you're doing collage. Um, I would recommend, as I said, to use something like washi tape right down the middle so here, let me just give a little demonstration of what I would typically do. Measure out your paper, and then you can, you don't need to t uh, cut it right away. You can just leave it, and if you do a whole bunch of pages, then you can cut them all at once, whatever. 
Now let me show you what it would look like if you did, if you pulled out a bunch of pages or if you left them inside. These are some notebooks from Cavallini, Cavallini Papers. And this is what the brand new notebook looks like. It's full of pages. And here I tore out definitely more than half. I think I tore out three fourths of the contents of these pages. I just did as I showed you. Kept one page, tore two out. Kept one, tore two out. Sometimes even three out. And then I reinforced with washi tape. And after I finished with collaging, look, you can see that it's pretty darn full. So this is what it looks like. Okay. So they do fill up. So don't feel worried that you're tearing too many pages out. I wanted to show you these. This idea of to use passports, um, these are great things to use as a journal. Um, oftentimes with passports, you go on journeys. You go, on, you go see places that you wouldn't typically see. And once your passport is expired, it's really neat to go back and to add small photos or to write notes or to journal about your trip and what you saw. This was my son's passport, you know, for children under 18, they need to get a passport every five years. So, you know, his, he grew out of this, this first one. And so I went in and I added a bunch of photos and you know, kind of memories of, of visiting his grandparents abroad. So this is a great place to, to journal, to write notes. And then there is this company called the Unemployed Philosophers Guild, who creates these passport notebooks. So they have, you know, you know, spaces for you to write or do whatever in these notebooks. And I turned this into a glue book with, in a, with a space theme. And I just used a bunch of postcard or not postcards, postage stamps um, in a space theme to make this journal. The front is, is, is cool. The front is cool because it has this, you know, the information page and uh, a photo of, of the person who's got the passport. So this was fun to do. This company, the Unemployed Philosophers Guild, they have a whole bunch of these ranges of, of passports. Here's another one, Pan, Pangea Passport. I haven't opened this one yet. This is also, you know, graph paper. Um, so they're really cool notebooks to, to journal in or, you know, to create glue books out of. Or, as I said, use an old passport or use somebody else's passport. I know that sounds really weird, but I bet you if you go on eBay, you can probably find old passports. Um, and um, those are fun because you can just imagine where this person has gone based on the, based on the, what's it called? The, the stamps, based on the stamps inside. And so, you know, you could write a story or create some kind of, you know, fictitious passport uh, based on the places that the person had has been. Okay, so that's some journaling ideas for you. Another thing that you can use for an art journal and for a glue book is a junk journal, of course. You can create your own journal out of, you know, signatures of papers that you put together, assemble together, and then use it for journaling. Here I put in some papers with some lines, so I definitely could be writing things. This journal, junk journal I made uh, with papers that I bought in Slovakia when I went there to go visit um, some relatives. So I used book pages um, and just a range of, of papers and things that you know I could find to create this junk journal. And this would be a really cool place to to write notes and to journal or you know to use as an art um, an art glue book. A 
Another thing that you can use is an altered book. An altered book is where you take an old existing published book and then alter the pages and to create a new piece of art out of it. This one I did not make. This one was made by Jane Chip. Um, Willow Blue Vintage is the name of her shop on Etsy and she sells these 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 journals and you tear out, a, or in this case, she did tear out a bunch of pages of this, which was a English-Ukrainian dictionary. And then, you know, she added things in here, of course. But um, this, is, this is altered. And you can use gesso on pages that, are, that have text on them. You know, if you think, um, you know, you can't write on a book page that already has text, what you can do here, this has got gesso on it. You can see that the text is faded. You use something like this, Liquitex gesso. Take your, you know, pour some in a little container and your paintbrush, and you can make it as thin or as thick as you'd like, or put in two layers or three layers, you know, depending if you want it completely, completely stark white, or if you want a very you know subtle kind of shading, kind of opaque, um, with a view to to the text underneath, it's entirely up to you. But when you do so, use something like this, then it makes your page receptive to things like ink, so you can be doing um, stamping or you know shading with inks and things like that. Okay, so this is a really cool little book. She added tabs. She even, I don't even know how she did it. She sewed pages. I don't know if she sewed the pages and then put them back in the book or put this on her machine somehow. I really don't know, but it's such an awesome little book. They've got some tabs made from postage stamps here. Okay, so altered book is a great way to make a glue book or art journal. And what's, let's see, anything else? I found these little notebooks. These I found in the bargain bin at Target. The, the cover looked like this. It says books, assorted color books, $3.00 eight sheets, 16 pages each. The reason why I like these is because the commitment is so low on these. You have eight sheets, 16 pages front and back. And sometimes if you are overwhelmed with creating a full journal, a journal, you know, that is really big and fat like this, for example, you're like, oh my God, how can I possibly create, you know, or fill something like this. So many pages, right? With this, your commitment to complete 16 pages or single-sided eight pages is super low. And you're like, and so maybe you're thinking, oh, well, I can do that. I can, I can do eight pages of journaling. So if you create, if you finish one journal, you can start it on the next one and see how that goes. And if you finish this one, then go, you continue on and on and on. And then what I think you can do, this is what I want to do, is you take a piece or several pieces of double-sided tape and you can attach these books together, right? So your journal can grow with you depending on what you do. I think that's a really cool thing. So you're eventually you could end up with all these journals connected to each other and you would just finish with this, right? And the chances of getting alligator mouth of, of, of the journal, you know, getting fat this way, I think they will, they, the chances are they would, it would not bulk up quite that much because your spine is going to be spread out just a little bit more. Um, and so I think that would be a really good 
thing to experiment with. I would also at the end maybe put a piece of fabric or cloth over, over the top of, of the spine to kind of bind them together. Or you can keep them like this and then you can see the rainbow as you want. So I really like the idea of using these. I will say that the paper is extremely thin. This is pretty, pretty thin. So it might be a good idea to double these up. In that case, I would just take a glue stick and you know, glue one page and, and, and put it over the top. And then in that case, you would have even less pages that you would be working with. You would be working with four pages or eight um, you know, sides. But I think this would be a fun way to create a journal. All right, so these are all my examples. I hope you've gotten some ideas from all the examples you've seen. Do let me know in the comments what kind of glue book or art journal you particularly like to use. And thanks so much for watching. I will see you the next time.